Howdy there, folks. Hope everybody is doing well, and I'm I'm going to try to make this the episode where we finally clear out Tennessee and its immediate environs. I mean, Corinth, and uh, it, we, we, last episode, episode 8, we cleared out a lot of this area. Uh, it's, it's hard to get. I mean, it's I guess southwest Virginia and north northwest North Carolina. It doesn't matter. Uh, but this third corps found a way out. Johnston defeated them. Ferguson was waiting for him, but it looks like he's found a way out. The plan now is to get Johnston the heck out of here. And Ferguson can take up this pursuit. Now, he doesn't have... Eh, I don't know exactly where he's going. But Ferguson can, can take up the pursuit and try to push that third core out. I know they're waiting here. Like, oh well. Because there are other issues. <laughs> The Army of Washington previously had had 105,000. I think why this is so low is because a bunch of their enlistments just ran out. Mine did too, but I've started to recapture some of them, and I raised a new core for the Army of North Carolina, which might join Ferguson at the end of the summer. Uh, but they had for a while 220, 230,000. What's going on in campaign is that in the last episode, my national morale went up from, I don't know, 90 to 95 as a result of a couple of battles uh, and naval engagements, uh, which are actually fairly large, uh, big victories for us, lopsided wins. And so we went from 90 to 95, but our national support went from 87 to 83. And so given that they're set to converge toward one another, that despite all that good news, in the long run, it didn't actually move us. But what did happen is that their national morale and national support ticked down. So you can read, I don't know, the average of ours is about 89. The average of theirs is 83. And so this is the biggest lead I've had in this campaign. Having said that, it's I've never had a campaign this, this close. We have a pair of squadrons that are, yeah, there we go. They are trying to fix themselves up. They are in bad shape from that. Big victory here. Uh, Hampton, it was one of the several battles of, of Hampton's Roads that we've had in this playthrough. And so that's that. After we kind of cleaned up Southwest Virginia, I guess actually, yeah, I think I wrote in the description for the other episode that some of those battles were in the interior of North Carolina, but they're actually here. They're in Southwest uh, Virginia. And now we have to try to race back and deal with whatever's going on here. And it's, it's just... It's telling, right, that men fielded, we're, we're like close enough. They still have nine invasion forces. We've dealt almost 50% more casualties, although casualties are really low for, for one year into the war. And despite all of that, it's still leaning very slightly towards the unit. And I think part of the reason can be found here. The interest rates have large, they were paying a much higher interest rate. They're getting closer. The credit ratings are also right the gap between them is starting to close and i think this is another part of the story i'm running a deficit still they are running a surplus projected to be about 300 million going forward for the next 12 months if they're able to and they are set up to be able to do this to translate that into more money better weapons i'm sorry to translate more money into more manpower and better weapons this campaign is going to be rough on, on the back end. But the agenda for this episode, and I have no idea how it's actually going to, going to go, is to get moving with the Army of the Northwest. And really, it's the... What is what is the name? It's it's Army of Tennessee is, is what it is. And they're going to move against this third corps, which was beaten, I think, two episodes ago. And it was like two months ago, and they were allowed, to, whoa, whoa, whoa. I allowed them to fall back here, and I didn't pursue them because I didn't have enough armies with, with readiness to catch them. So I still don't really have, I, I would like Polk and, and Bragg to be further towards the green and, and well into it, but Garnett has been ready to go. He was ready to go last episode, uh, but I just don't want to send them in unsupported. All right, this is good news. All right, our first army in is almost as large as theirs. This is so silly when they have... I, 
I'm actually not sure how this is going to go. All right, what do we see here? So, yeah, this sometimes happens when it shows that only your army HQ is going to show up. They actually send in the reinforcements early. I guess that's kind of good. I, I would just make it so that, you know, army HQs can't arrive on, on their own. All right, so Garnet is going to be here. Uh, this is another one of Murfreesboro. And we have to cross again everything to get there. Uh, ba, 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 ba. So this is the most direct way, right? This is the, uh, yeah, this is the big old road, the pike. And we got to capture, it's a five-pointer. Luckily, it's not the ten-pointer that sits over here. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I don't know. I think I'm going to move one force up and see how that goes. I actually don't want these guys. No. There, give me this. Yes, double line this. Come on, guys. You know you're supposed to be in double line. There you go, and there you go. It makes it a little bit easier for me to find the cat. All right, caver here. And uh, we're going to put some there. Can we go some weird way down here? Uh, I think it's weird. I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to show me anything, but let's see what we get. Come on. All right, let's play this thing. And see, it's almost end of day. Yeah. No. Move him up. Move Whitting up. Move Randall up. Uh, we'll move Bragg up. Just move everybody up here. As far as we go, because we're going to have to reset again very soon. And just move Garnett up. See what we get. Oops, my bad. Yeah, you come around here. Alright. Where is Whitting? Move him up. Move Lee's cavalry up. Yeah, move you down there. All right. Where where is our redeployment? What's redeployment bubble? All right, so we can jump pretty far forward. Where is Paul? Paul goes back here. Back there? How about back there? All right, I'm going to send Walker across the way to Wayne's Hill. I'm going to move, I believe it was Bragg. Well, it should be Bragg minus Lee. You can move them up to right about here over here is Garnet we can take can get rid of right you and eh, we'll put you over there put your scouts there and then we'll take Garnet and Good question on what we do with Garnett. I think I answered my own question here. Put Bragg there, and we move Garnett to the center. I don't like having this between them, but I think either force in a defensive fight could probably take the force that's there. We will see. And now Polk gets this teleportation forward because of the reinforcement bubble and uh, you know I really may not be pushing in the right direction so we're gonna push them out like that and we're gonna press play 
detach the cav and send it forward over here uh, here and here let's see what we learn from that let's clear this up clear that up we know we're going to be behind in victory points hopefully not in morale all right, we have no one yet. Lee's going to continue down here. Randall's going to continue here. And Haygood can continue out here. All right, we have found them curiously back here. So... Take, who is that? That's Bragg. And Bragg is going to try to come down here. Lee can continue out to the side. This is Garnett. And Garnett should come out right about... I really should learn my lesson about the forest come out there and I guess Talaferro's division how do we get there okay so that's how we get there all right we'll go with that but I do want to try to push together uh, we'll try to learn a little bit more about that position can at, uh, can we come up behind we cannot yeah, but we could put these two cav brigades at that bridge. I, I, I remember this part of this I've fought here before. Man, this looks nice. But we can shoot across it, and they probably have Maynards or, or Jocelyn's. They can probably make most of that uninhabitable, and then the, the main push from infantry artillery will come through this field. It can move more quickly. This stuff will have more concealment, but it will be pretty broken up by the, the terrain. So uh, that's what I think we'll do. I will run it dangerously fast at 20x. Yeah, I think the scouts have kind of, they've done what they were supposed to do. So we'll recall them. Uh, maybe we'll recall them. Okay, and then Wilcox. Oh. Hmm. Not sure what they're doing here. I'd maybe pull back a bit here. Moving into the woods, I guess. I guess if you have to, right? You move into the woods, but... I mean... They don't have an exit route anymore. So it's, it's a bit odd. All right, who's up here? So this is Bragg's force. Let's just wait for them to, to get assembled. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they should be reading this situation. If I can see them, and it's not just because of my cab, it's, it's with everyone, they should be reforming <laughs> Honestly, probably back here, and uh, just just dare me to shoot it out. That probably give them the best casualties. All right, but it's nine in the morning. Nobody looks like they're about to break on my side. I know, famous last words. But uh, let's detach our artillery, and then move it. 
we'll do that for everyone that I can remember to do it for. So it'll be like half of them. And wait a minute, I am missing people. It's like Talafera is here, but no one else. Now well, I'm not gonna wait for him. There'll be the uh, the reserve, and yeah, Whitting should get in here for at least role playing reasons. Uh, all right, and so we'll detach that artillery. Having done that, Bragg can move up. Here. Garnett can move here. And Talaferro can move up there. And we'll move the cab up here, up here, and over here. It's a pretty nice day, which is too bad for those Union folks. They have us behind, even though we outnumber them four and a half to one. And it must, it's because of the victory points they've accumulated from that, that five pointer, but it took a while to get across the map. So, uh, and then move the armies. All right, let's just watch it. We'll have some fun here. I'll have fun. Let me try something. I've always said that this is what the AI should do to my skirmishers. So I'll do it to theirs and see how see how it works. Charge him. Yeah, at the double. Come on, man. It's a charge. You're cavalry. How is this not your second nature? There you go. We'll see what happens. So skirmishers have a terrible debuff in melee. But you should remember, not just for your infantry skirmishers, but if you have cav in dismounted loose formation, that's also hitting on them. And so if they get charged by, uh-oh, like you're about to see here, go away. We want to, oh no, oh no, stop what you're doing, shoot it out, yes, retreat, whatever. Do not charge over there. All right, so since I've distracted them with the rest of my force. I don't feel like giving them more specific orders than that. Oh. What do you think they're doing? Well, they're they're probably going to route, but why? Whatever, it's covering the advance of everyone else. I'll uh, role play explanation it away. I think that artillery is far too far away to be useful. Yeah, what is this? Wilcox K w wounded? Randall, Brigadier General Randall, nonetheless.
They always get so weird when they have to, like, move backwards. I'm like, come on. It's, this is what you do. Alright, so it looks like we shot up that one battery up here. That's fine. We keep moving here. We keep moving here. And we're going to keep moving here. Now, yeah, let's try to move maybe more here. Yeah, it's it it's fine. At least they were distracted with that. So we made it most of the way in. I think we're also going to get this brigade if we haven't already. We're about to. And so it takes a little bit of the sting out of it. Yet we're we're still apparently losing. But their losses and routes obviously hurt them more uh, because they just have so many fewer. All right, that was good. And now what it allows is it allows Walker's Cav to come up on, on their flank. Oh, yeah, that'll happen too, but... I'm not sure that they'll be back. Oh, that was Randall. I guess Randall just got randomly sniped. Wait, what? What? Yeah, I think he got randomly sniped. Then we can try to rally. I'd, I'd be surprised. Where's the shooting? It's over here. Okay, their artillery has found us. Kind of. We're about to come through the, the trees over there. They need to do something. Like, leave one cav brigade... Maybe throw an infant. What are you doing? Leave maybe one infantry brigade to deal with this. And worry about what's going on in your front, man. Maybe not even. Maybe just leave the cav brigade at a weird angle like this. And then just rush everyone you can. Because this is happening. Looks like maybe they have some... Three inch or are those parrots? It looked more like parrots at second glance. From here they look like parrots. But we are forming up for the final attack here. Uh, Talifera has got to get his division in. They've had the hardest move. They're just... They have to trudge through... Uh, I should have moved these guys up. Through basically terrible, terrible terrain. But they're actually in pretty good... They're in really good condition under the circumstances. So that's nice. Barksteel's going to move up. Walker's going to move up. Uh, okay, Alcorn, why don't you get more up here? Daniel. Yeah, why don't you guys press in like this. And Bragg, you can press in like... Well, that's not really what I wanted, but yeah, actually it kind of is. So, And we'll do that. I guess I can set everybody to attack as well, right? Just see how that goes. Attack. Uh, Garnet, it can be... No, 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 no. Move in, move in, move in. Do not fall all the way back there. No, 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 you're moving in. Yeah, like that. Eh, it's fine, too. Alright, let's watch it! Considering I'm not really worried about the outcome. So, H.T. Walker himself is getting quite quite the name. Even though I remember in a, another battle, he really flubbed it. So I don't know how he's doing this, but it's probably because Lee is his commander. It's the only thing I think of. Good administrator... 
He's active, inspiring, yet predictable. We are fighting a bit of lag here at 13 FPS. For chuckles, I know we're gonna we're gonna slide out of view here, but I just want to see if my CPU is actually caring at all about this. 63 degrees, and the GPU is flat at 37. Uh, so I guess the CPU cares a little bit, but it's not really strained. The fans haven't kicked up or anything like that. Uh, so it's yeah, not not much is the answer, but. All right, and now, I mean, I generally prefer to shoot it out anyways. I think that's probably the right way to do this. Bowens already has just arrived on the flank near their artillery. Is my infantry coming up close enough? Yeah, to cover it. All right, that's what I was concerned about. That I saw that blue there, and I was like, eh. This is a, a fatter pocket than... I could tell it first. Uh, all right, that was my bad. All right, they're shooting. That's fine. That's what we want. Well, if we're going to be in a melee, let's do it the right way. What are we waiting for here? No, I would keep moving. I don't really care how you do this, but I would move that way. Yeah, and I would keep moving that way. Wall and attack. I guess it's probably not that much different than just ordering them to attack. These guys with their, are they parrots? Three inch ordnance, it shows what I know about artillery. But it does look like they have very good flanking, if not enfilade fire on that brigade. No longer, they're making a smooth rotation to address it. All right, that I don't think was unexpected. I'm not going to try to run up the casualties against them. They've broken. It was a crap assignment from the beginning for them. Uh, but that's... Who got wounded in action at the very end? Barksdale. Uh. Oh, well. Oh, well. All right. They took 4,000. We took... Yeah, these are like more normal casualties I've seen in, in other campaigns. But they were so outnumbered. I don't really hold it against them. That is not a major victory. It may be saying that because of the, the text, but I think in terms of the morale implications, it, it isn't. I've nerfed down the morale gain for the victors and the morale loss for the losers, and I've made it more about casualties. Uh, Colonel Wilcox? I mean, yeah, that's probably... I don't know if it deserves being disgraced, but it was not good. Uh, truth of it is my fault, but yeah. Who wants to say that? All right, 372 killed, uh, 1775 captured. And we had 135 kill. So yeah, that's that's lopsided when you take the wounded into account or the captured into account. More importantly, though, let's press play this time before I complain about things not moving. More importantly, if we didn't take a huge hit to readiness for these armies, I'm gonna try to move them down the railroad. Or, I mean, th this doesn't really help me too much where I want to go, but we're gonna try to come into the back door of Corinth. And I think now, wow, how is Price at three stars? He hasn't, he hasn't fought. I'm pretty sure, eh, maybe once. 
Maybe once he did. But we're going to move in. I don't know if they're going to count me as in a... Actually, that's a good question. If they're going to count me as... I don't want river movement. Let's just see if we can... Can we just move here and engage them? Nope. Didn't mean to raid. Didn't mean to scout. Okay. Arkansas doesn't hate me eternally now. But you can see the how I've kind of finagled with support. So support in Tennessee is only 76%, right? Because of, as in the real war, right? There was unionist support. Particularly in East Tennessee, it was politically uh, an issue for Lincoln. Of course, I'm just reporting what uh, my goodness, I am blanking, but I, I actually have the trilogy next to me, so it's uh, what what foot wrote. Right, that's that's what he said. So I'll I'll, I'll go with that, and uh, it's good enough for me. But in Arkansas, which I accidentally rated for a second, it's it's still eighty-seven percent. So that's fine. Uh, what are they doing? We're gonna move winning over here. You know, let's just give Garnett this. This movement, sure. Let's give Whitting the same, or virtually the same. And let's move the Army of Florida and move Polk. We can move them in scouting. And a bit faster than some of the others. Ferguson is pursuing that core we beat up here in the previous episode. Oh, I'm worried about Johnston. Uh, problem is, if I stop him here, he's going to have low supply, and if you have low supply, you have, you generally will have lower readiness. So, yet again, no, no great options. Uh, we're going to push Beauregard and Magruder up, even though I have no idea what's up here. This is not a good way to play. But it's what I got. Army of North Carolina, I guess we can keep close to Ferguson. Why are we not moving? I feel like it's that weird glitch yet again. You give too many movement orders at once. They were prohibited in territories. Okay. Garnett knows to move. They ain't doing it. Any projects we can take? We're not. We're actually not far all behind. Civil order seems a little seem a little past that point. Do I go for improved credit rating? Now? I think I do. Do it now, and then think about whether I want to continue to save up for a second take of it later on in campaign. I don't. I think I'm going to do anything with uh... Alright, this is annoying as anything. So <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure when I come across, I have to come across as like an amphibious army, which means there's a big although there's a big nerf to our, our firepower. But as I say that if I fight it manually, I don't know that that matters. We'll see, right? That's that's how we find out. Army of Tennessee, are you actually moving here? Come on, move. Yeah, Garnett, that's the fastest way they calculated. That's fine. I'm just not sure that it's it's... What is the next take of improved credit rating going to cost me? 
42 million. It might be worth it. Maybe I've made that a little too expensive. What is this? What is this? I really don't know. All right, so this is that. No, we're not we're not going to do that because we have we're going to deploy to defend. And we're going to wait for McCullough to take his sweet time and get into this fight. Once he's engaged, I'm going to fight this battle. Get in there, McCullough. Okay, good. Now now I want to fight it. So what we're looking at, we kind of know all this 14,000 men, 50 guns. We have to attack, of course we do. So, Western Army is not here, but will be. This is quite the battlefield here. All right, so this is not going to be an already favored one. That's fine. Fine by me. What we are going to do is we're going to move up and try to find them. Okay, so we got the reinforcements just coming. I think this location, right, we have the railroad you can use. We have some fences and a tree, but fences and a tree, some fences in a field. Uh, that would help. All right, we're going to move here. Get rid of you. Get rid of you. We know, we know, we know. So we'll send the cab up. F what? <laughs> ha where, where did my cavalry go? In any event, we're going to move McCullough up here. And I'm going to detach the cab. And move the rest of price. I think up here is fine. Minor defeat. I wonder for what reason. Yeah, it's just morale. Although numbers wise. Yeah, no. Okay. Man, some of these are small. I remember Clark had over 2,000 men. But their, their re-enlistment must have just ended. And they're moving from... Must have been late 12-month contracts. And now they'll roll over to 36. It's also late in the day. It's 4 p.m., in game, I mean the the way the victory point and the marshes are set up, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean we have no choice except really to go straight in. Uh, it looks like they're on a fairly condensed front. They actually might have some line of sight, yeah, across that marsh. So I I would come in through the forest. Uh, these guys, I I don't want anywhere near the battle. They're they're just gonna rout, but. Yeah, let's get Price up here. We'll see how fast they can get up there. They can exhaust themselves today because they're, they're, they're going to get nap time here pretty soon. And we're going to try to get these folks across up here. Sure, they can take pot shots. Remember, if we go to overnight, it's going to be, you know, where did the reinforcement bubbles land? These guys are going to be terrible if I sent them in, yeah, to battle today. But really what we need is for Price and McCullough to get up pretty far, at least to any of their division commanders, because that's what moves our, our little reinforcement bubble around.
or our movement, our overnight movement bubble around. Yeah. Oops. All right, so we have Hamilton's Cav. Yeah, they're gonna end up on the flank. But the plan for tomorrow, and that's what we're playing for, is to just advance through this force. They will almost, almost without question, that they're probably gonna reset, but I don't know that they can reset that much further back. They're in a very strong position, right? They have these two little waterways that break up movement. They could also move in, move their infantry into it. The marsh breaks up movement. Uh, they're just not wide enough. They seem to have a little, a little bit too much artillery. Kala, yeah. I think the play actually with Withers. I don't, I don't know the number of cavalry affect the morale benefit, but remember cavalry. Buy friendlies does give a morale benefit. So we're going to try to utilize that. They are reshifting a bit here. That's fine. Okay, we're going to move up. All right, end of day so we can organize things hopefully a little bit better. All right, deployment. Price, move up there. Withers Cav up there. <laughs> that dust. All right, we're gonna detach the artillery just simply to give ourselves divisional movement options. Uh, I wish the larger brigades were in front and some of the smaller ones were further back. Okay, McCullough is over here. This is very weird. All right, we're gonna take the calf. I'm gonna move them far out, man. And attach their artillery and put it there. Same with these guys. Creep that around the side. Um. I think we're going to stay with the compact, the more compact brigades, so, or the more compact divisions. They just look so weird. All right, we'll move you there, and we'll move you there. All right, let's play. And we're off. I don't know that we can actually see anything for our artillery. Yeah, now that they're behind the point. Oh, well. There, yeah, we can still move this artillery up. I know this artillery doesn't have great sight lines on anything right now. That's We know that. We know that. This cab can move up. McBride can move his division Withers can move his, uh, move a little over there. Reigns division. And Anderson, yes. And we'll speed it up. Try to make it pretty. And slow it down as we get close. So they marched along the railroad. It's an interesting... It's probably the fastest way, right? For infantry, they use. Five twenty in the morning. Uh, Macintosh's cav. Try to get to the side. It might be close enough to support McBride's division. I don't know about the rest. Where there's cav should come up and just have a presence. All right, and they're going to rotate back. And they're going to seed the victory point. Huh. 
Yeah, I mean that's that's fine because they've I mean they've gotten what they can get from it, right? They've gotten five points, they're already up a morale point, they just don't have a whole lot of numbers if we go fifty fifty in terms of what? They have ten thousand? I thought they had twenty thousand for some reason. I was like, oh I'm up by fifty percent. So maybe it was just bad intelligence. But now I'm really inclined to, to press an attack. If only we could get the troops in position. I don't hear anything yet. All right, so they're down. Well, they're engaged. They're not down. Now they're down and loose. What's everything else look like? All right, wither. No, no, no. Withers. It's supposed to push up. Reigns' division can push up. They can push up. And McBride can push up. McIntosh is going to have to try to make up in... Yeah, with with rifles, what he doesn't have in numbers. I'm not too sure about that. But at least we got some action we can watch, so. They look like they still want to find their position. I'm thinking this close. We just make ourselves hard to hit. Even harder to hit than being in loose formation. Oh, come on. We have to be able to hit them from here. Yeah. All right. We can. We can. We can. I mean, dismounted, loose formation, in a forest, laying down. We should be very hard to hit. All right. They got the men. <laughs> the menu. The menu? They got the memo. Uh, is my artillery actually doing anything? No. So. Can we not see these guys? That seems hard to believe, man. That seems hard to believe that we can't see this. I mean, I can see them. Even even if I, right? I mean that is really unobstructed. And yeah, we're bunched up. We know we're bunched up, but we also have some smaller brigades at the front. Uh, who is this? Okay, let's recall our scouts. We don't need them out. We'll just come over here. Excellent. So we got we got them. That's huge, no doubt. We're going to continue to move around. It's just going to be a grind over here. This is so far to move when you're in the forest. All right, we found some targets. Good to know. So we are on the very left of the Union line right now. I was going to say, I was wondering if the cow was going to go out for a quick rush at my artillery, which, honestly, if anybody could do it, they probably could, but cav just hate getting lit up by artillery. No one likes it, but Cav really hate it. Yeah, those aren't fantastic. Let's see what happens when we put them back at fire at will. Nope, that's not what I meant to do. That's what I meant to do. I 
think we're going to try to lose slowly on our right and then hit them more forcefully. Um, Cull looks like he wants to end up there. I really wish we could attack enemy. We could just give attack orders for enemy divisions. Like attack that division and just let the AI figure out. Because that's not what, what we're seeing here. It's either attack the artillery or it's attack the infantry, but it's not attack. Can't remember the name. Column. But that's not even what I want. That's not even right. So these guys should come through here, I think. Winder should come through here. And not Price, not Withers. Should be Anderson, I think that would. Try to do something about this. What happens if we tell them to go attack that brigade? Because we can't tell them to attack the division. I mean, the cav bonus to friendly infantry is symmetrical in this case, I assume. Okay, Reigns' division, we can order in here. Let's see how they do. And then one kind of benefit is that I think these two brigades are they're too obstructed by their friendly brigade up here and maybe too far back to shoot it a lot. I know that they are getting good shots on the right side of Baylor's brigade. Yeah, Baylor's brigade's getting roughed up. But they're in good spirits. And overall, it is slightly, slightly against us. That seems to be morale. <laughs> it's it's barely morale. It's mostly objective points, though. I mean, that's the big difference. We're we're starting to collect objective points. We're down by three. In terms of morale, we're down by a half of one. But we have apparently a pretty significant numbers advantage. I'm not sure sure I believe it. I mean. Two, three, four brigades of probably two thousand or more, but do they have anything else? They they do. I mean they have another brigade over here. So yeah, I'm just not sure what's going on. But we are crawling through the forest. I mean I guess we can order these guys over here. I don't think they're gonna get over here before the day's out. Yeah, and this is just the silly thing that the AI does. It obstructs. It should be obstructing a lot of the line of sight of these. Not the first two brigades so much, as long as they have different targets. But this third brigade back here is just not, not in a good position. Because their artillery, I guess, doesn't quite see the, the opening here. They, I mean, if they were put just behind the marsh on their side, I would think that they'd have a, an okay time. Even slightly in the marsh, like right here, they should largely avoid some of the movement penalties and, and be able to do quite a bit of damage. All right, we're going to bring Macintosh in the back and try to make quicker work of this. Bait, Rhodes, Baylor, and Contact. All right. So Contact. A lot of Contact going down. 
The two batteries we have up are doing their thing. This is going to be at 2x speed, so it looks faster than normal. Because it's twice as fast. They're moving... So this brigade is moving up, this brigade is moving back. I guess they're trying to straighten out the line. But it also means that this brigade isn't going to get the cover of the creek there. The battles brigade. Looks like it's probably engaging that artillery. And you get a brigade that close engaging artillery, I would think the brigade has the advantage. So far, I've kept these guys out of combat. I'm going to continue to try to do that because what I really want from them is the morale buff they give to nearby infantry. Oh my goodness! Baylor's gotten absolutely torn up, but doesn't really seem perturbed by it. I guess being in cover, supported, friendly cab, and commander nearby, all those things help. And somehow we've inflicted more casualties on them. It's probably because we have more just more people firing. I'm guessing. And it looks like we routed the battery up here. Alright, so... I don't really want Macintosh. In a melee with them, but I don't mind shooting them. McBride's troops are just moving so slow. I think they're... Yeah. Yep. It's the forest. And it's probably also... I don't know if it's lack of training. I mean, we could find out. No, like, training is, is, is fine. It's just they don't have a lot of combat experience. So the big blow was supposed to land this way. And instead now I think we just kind of have to slug it out here in the front. And... One of the few things that seem to be going my way is that they're just not, they're not able to get shots, so they're kind of just sitting there. We're getting some shots into their artillery, which they are very heavy on. Mm, that looks like it was more from the batteries I have over here. Yeah, and I think they're going to lose that battery, if not that artillery brigade. Uh, Alright, so we have Macintosh's mounted rifles. I'm curious. Oh, okay, so things have jumped in our favor. The reason it's their morale. Their morale is starting to crack. I'm sure fatigue is weighing on both sides. It's still not even 8 o'clock in the morning, though. So, the total attack, I think, has been less than 3 hours at this point. Oh, I didn't even know that Battle was engaged down here with... Oh, and they broke them. That... Yeah, that's it. Yep, that's it. So that is the Battle of Memphis Ferry. And that's kind of the second part of what I thought would be a three-act play here. The last is not in Tennessee, but it's very close. It's in Corinth. And we'll, we'll see who's ready to go after this. Alright. We see... It's about two to one killed. And yeah, we didn't capture many of them because I didn't, I didn't pursue them in garbage time. So... That should put us... 
on this side of the Mississippi. And now it's just going to be a matter of what can we do in other spots. So That's what we'll find out next. We have our... I don't know if I believe that credit rating. I would say give that credit rating a little while to, to play through. And for whatever reason, they've gone from 9 down, now down to 6. Union invasions. Though, you see that, that army... Uh, oh, well, there it was. The army of Washington... It jumped from like 85,000 last time I looked at it to 100 and almost 20,000. Yikes. I don't think they have all their 200 guns. I don't think they have all their core in tow, though. I mean, I want to speak, but we're getting there at least. Well, Johnson's going to be out of action for a while, I think. Uh, all right. You need to stop, Ferguson, because we've got to get your readiness back. So that you can do something at some point. And who is, is that? Okay, so that's Garnett. I'm going to see. All right. It's starting to come together. Though speaking of, of coming together, I, I kind of hope that the first core that's here doesn't join the third core that's here. Because if it does, we're in trouble. We actually might arrive here at about the same time. So we're going to take these two armies out of scouting. Out of an abundance of caution. Okay, we got to move across. Yes. Good. And capture. Recapture Memphis. No idea who's blockading that. It's, it's a bit odd. And we're going to push up here. With absolutely no idea what, what's waiting for us. Oh. What? Is, wh what? Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. You stop. You get back here. Army of whatever, you need to get back here too. See if you can call in Hamptons or anyone else. Because that, that's a big chunk of that army of Washington. Let's see, we got 14 here. 18 puts us at 32. And 16 put us at 48. Versus 55, and I don't think we're going to arrive together. So, yeah. Good, good luck to me. We're still in June, man. Alright, so they escaped. So we're going to put these two back in scouting. Hmm. And these guys have just ignored me. It's fine. It's what I've come to expect. But if we can capture, recapture Memphis, that'd be nice. And then we just got to do something about that third core is probably beat up and demoralized. It's 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 in a bad shape. Their second core is in better shape. We've also left Nashville uncovered, but whatever. What's this? We're retreating? Alright, so if we're going to retreat, it's good to know, but let's do it. To, let's meet up together. Yeah, you got to get back here. You got to get back here. You got to get back here. But I think that is going to be for another episode. Crossed our 60 minute mark. Some of these have gone a fair amount further than 60 minutes and uh, there's nothing wrong with that but that's I'm trying to keep it to around that amount this one was a battle heavy as opposed to the one before which was campaign heavy I hope you enjoyed it I enjoyed playing it we mostly accomplished what I thought we might get to in this one which was mostly recapturing pushing Union forces out of parts of Tennessee 
even if we deal with the Corinth issue, we still have to get to Fort Hyman and retake that. We have to deal with Fort Pillow. Uh, but the bigger threat right now seems to be the one to Richmond. Even if we got Ferguson there, we might... Well, then we would have a slight numerical advantage, but it, it would be rough. So we'll have to wait for another episode to find out how that plays out. I wonder... How's our net? I guess I guess it's because of the last the last win there, but they didn't take a hit from from losing that, so that's good to know. But I'm wondering if we need to call on arms. Yeah, we don't. Well, we got to actually. It just so happens we have a number of states that could give us full brigades. I'm thinking when we get done with working our way through, basically Ag Two or King Cotton Two. Maybe we think about the Conscription Act. I'm not hot on the loss of morale, but I like the increased speed of replacements, particularly as we have contracts that are coming to an end. So that's where my mind's at right now. And I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed playing it. It's still as close as it's ever been. And uh, that that is making for a very fun time on my end.